Smoke Pit Fairy Tales by Trip Ainsworth. Chapter 20. Inebriance. Wednesday night, I went to go check on a Claire. You know, make sure he didn't kill himself or anything stupid like that. I was still jolted from the Kelsey thing, so he couldn't have been feeling good. When I rolled up to the barracks, he was by his Camaro smoking a cigarette. Eclair stared at the pavement below. Sup, dude? Not much, man. Just getting off work. I stepped out of the Jeep next to Eclair and lit a lucky. How you doing? I'm still a little messed up, but I'm doing better than I thought I'd be. That's good. Yeah. I'm going over to Jenny's tonight. She hasn't said anything about Kelsey yet. She said she's been talking to Penelope a lot. They're trying to plan something for this weekend. Yeah, Penelope said something about that. I'm just wondering when people are going to notice she's missing. And what if they come looking my way for her? I don't know, man. I mean, she had her own apartment, right? And I don't know how much she talked to her parents so that they'd be wondering or school or work or anything. I guess, I guess we'll see, man. It yeah, just act normal around Jenny and if she says anything about Kelsey, you know, just shrug it off. And if something triggers insanity, I'll just blame the war, man. Eclair smiled. That is such a cop-out. But I like it, so I'm going to use that. My moral compass is spinning on all this, man. Yeah, well, my moral compass is in the Bermuda Triangle. About a month went by without incident. It was late August, and Tom threw a party at Spike's for Penelope's birthday. Ginny and Eclair came. Doc brought his new squeeze, Christy. Instead of just a nice shirt, Eclair, Doc, and I wore suits. They weren't extravagant, but it was better than jeans. The band was playing a song about shenanigans in Chicago. Penelope had most of her friends there. She was short in comparison. I hadn't met a majority of them before. Penelope was 5'10 or 11, and most of her virescent friends were well over 6'3. I was sitting on a stool, resting my back on the bar. My tie was loosened, and I was sipping on a rum and coke. Doc and Christy were still in their cute and flirty phase of their relationship. Eclair flung himself onto the bar stool next to me. Sup, brother? Not much, man. How's it hanging? I took a swig of my drink. Eh, fucking Jenny's pissed off because I'm too drunk already. She'll be alright, man. Eh. Is that Doc's new chick? Yeah. Christy. I, I think. I've had like one conversation with her. She's cute. I guess. I, I'm not really into Asians. Filipinos are Pacific Islanders, man. Okay, well, either way, it's too close to Thailand, and I'm not attracted to chicks with dicks. What about that time? Let's not go there, man. I bailed out on time. <laughs> sure. Dick. Eclair leaned over to Doc and Christy. Hey! I'm Eclair! He extended his hand. That's a weird name. Christy stuck out her hand to shake. No one calls him by his first name besides his girlfriend. Doc said between them. What's your first name? Christy asked with a curious look. Richard. Eclair took his hand back and grabbed his drink. Okay, Dick. I can see why. Hey, Doc. She's cool. She can hang out. Jenny walked past us. If she did notice us, she was pretending not to. Eclair grabbed her wrist, pulled her in, and wrapped his hands around her waist. Jenny, 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 Jenny! Jenny was obviously annoyed. Richard, you're drunk. So are you! Eclair protested. I'm not that drunk. Eclair incoherently flapped his lips and rubbed them on Jenny's shoulder over her dress. Jenny tried not to laugh. Fine, fine. Buy me a drink. She kissed him on the temple. Eclair ordered two white Russians. When the bartender delivered the drinks, Jenny said, I like how they dress like they're in an old western. The bartender uniform was black slacks, a white colored shirt, and armbands with clamps. They all had their hair slicked back, and most of them had thick mustaches. Kelsey said she hooked up with one of these guys a while back. Yeah? Eclair asked nervously. What's she been up to recently? I haven't seen her around. Jenny sipped her drink. I don't know. I haven't seen her either. Last time I heard from her, she said she was going to hang out with you, and then there was something she said she wanted to talk to me about later that night. <laughs> Dude, that was a crazy night. I butted in. Eclair glared at me. Oh, yeah? Yeah, she came down to the barracks when we were all playing beer pong on the smoke deck. Kelsey got super fucked up and started giving this dude a hand job. Then, you know, she started walking off with him. I lied through my rum. That sounds like her. Jenny smiled. Yeah, she seems like she has some serious daddy issues. 
Maybe, but it's been a while since I've talked to her. I should probably call her tomorrow and see what she's been up to. She probably took up a room at the third deck of the barracks and is paying her rent and pussy. He cleared down his white Russian in one gulp and waved down the bartender. Oh, Allensworth. Did I tell you about my boss yet? No. I think you and Richard would like to meet him sometime. He's this old Vietnam vet. Uh, okay. He usually runs in the morning and showers at work. I saw him the other day in the back on accident without a shirt. Wait, he didn't have a shirt or you didn't have a shirt? He didn't have a shirt. Anyway, he has the same marine tattoo you and Richard have, the diamond on your chest, except his one is filled in red. That's pretty neat. Eclair said in a break between sucking down drinks. Does he have a palm tree and a seven like I do too? No, he has a bunch of skulls there. He says each skull was from a confirmed kill in Nam, and he's always talking about killing fucking Charlie and slaying Poon. Now that's a man after my heart. I put down my drink and searched my pockets for cigarettes. What's really weird though? Ginny turned to Eclair. Is that he looks just like your dad. Maybe he says long lost brother? Well, his name is Eric LeClaire. Eclair gave Jenny a funny look. Yeah, Richard Eclair, Eric LeClaire. Weird, right? Sounds like a ghost story to me. Christy interrupted from behind. I don't think we met. I'm Jenny. She extended her hand. Christy. She looked back to Doc and said, I'm just meeting all your friends tonight, huh? Jenny continued. But anyway, I'm pretty sure his favorite words are gook, the N word, mudge, and fucknut. That's kind of weird that a Vietnam guy uses the word mooch. Yeah, but he's usually pretty nice to me and the other girls that work there, so he can say whatever he wants. You guys should come in sometime and meet him. Yeah, well, sounds good. I'll be back. I left an empty glass in the bar and found the men's room. When I walked back out to the main area, Penelope waved me down. She was sitting with a group of virescents I hadn't met before. I dragged over an empty chair and sat down. Hank! This is Faye, Amal, Roan, Frince, and June. She introduced the others at the table. We exchanged hellos and they poured me a glass of Hess varieties. Faye had straight shoulder length hair that covered the right quarter of her face. It was so black that the light didn't reflect from it. I couldn't make out where one clump of hair ended and another started. I wondered if it was that way in sunlight too or if that was just because the lights were so low. It couldn't have been that. Doc had black hair and I could make out the strands in his. Faye had a black vest over a white blouse and was relaxing in the Frince's shoulder. So, Penelope tells me you're a soldier. Faye tried to start a conversation. Did she? I turned to Penelope. Soldier, huh? Penelope smiled over a shrug, drinking her wine. I wanted to tell her, believe it or not, I do like it when you're being a bitch, but there is a fucking limit. But I settled for a dirty look. Is that not right? Faye asked. I'm not a soldier, I'm a marine. What's the difference? I was starting to wonder if Faye was being sincere or if Penelope put her up to this for her own amusement. Uh, soldiers parachute in and fight. Uh, Marines come from the water. So you're a sea soldier? Penelope sported a shit-eating grin and put her hand on my thigh. Now I knew she was screwing with me. If anything, we're more like sailors. Frintz smirked. Oh, uh, how so? Yeah, you know, uh, you travel the world. I reach for my cigarettes. Meet all kinds of new and interesting people. Prince and Faye nodded their heads while I pulled out a cigarette. Fuck the women roll and all their holes. Their smug smirks turned to grimaces. I flicked open my lighter, then hit the beach, stomped people's throats, and stabbed them in the fucking neck for a paycheck. I lit the cigarette. The table was silent. Penelope leaned in. I'm sorry, Hank's drunk. I slammed the table with my fist. Come on, guys, I'm fucking with you. It's a party. Laugh. They looked at each other and burst into nervous laughter, except Penelope, who looked at me unsettled. Oh, that was good, Hank. You really had us going. Yeah, man, it was funny. Pour me another glass of wine. I handed him my glass and leaned into Penelope's ear. Don't ever have your friends do that again. Quit telling me, soldier. I'm a fucking Marine. Hank, it was a joke. I didn't think it was funny. It's just a word, Hank. No. No, it's not. I looked around the table. Everyone went back to having their own conversations. I'm going to go make sure Doc and Eclair are staying out of trouble. I stood up. Excuse me. I buttoned my jacket and walked towards Doc and Eclair. I could feel Penelope staring at me from behind. I heard her start saying something to her friends about Iraq. I leaned on the bar behind Jenny and Eclair and looked over at the barkeeper. Hey, Tom. Hank. Mind pouring me a shot of Jaeger and a glass of whiskey? No problem. Tom started mixing the drinks. Hey, so how did you get into this? Bartending. Yeah. It's fun. 
I did it while we were on the ship, and it seemed easy to get into when we got to Earth. Tom handed me a tumbler of whiskey. I swallowed it in one gulp and spun my finger for another. Please. Tom placed the bottle on the bar. Already one of those nights? Every night's one of those nights. Would you like to talk about it? Sure, Tom. Why the fuck not? What's on your mind? Tom poured the whiskey in my glass straight. Just shit. You, you know, people don't get shit. I mean, it... it I'm, I'm not, like, fucking trying to force things on people, but it's like, fuck, dude. You know? No, absolutely nothing about what you said was coherent. I stared at Tom through my bloodshot eyes as I downed my whiskey. As he refilled the glass, I said, You're a waiter, right? No, I'm a bartender. There's a difference. Exactly. Your sister keeps calling me a fucking waiter. Tom shrugged with one shoulder. You don't have to get angry about it. If I could help that, Tom, we wouldn't be having this conversation. Now would we? I suppose not. I raised my eyebrows. But warriors are always proud, even when they're humble. I grabbed the shot of Jaeger that had been sitting there. Tom, I shook the glass. You're all right. Hey, what do you guys do for birthdays anyway? Break pinatas and eat cake? We have dinner, and there's a toast to age. Sometimes there are games. It's usually just a big party. How do your years work? Like, you know, aligning with ours and all? I don't know what exactly the math is, but a year on our old planet is six or eight of your years. It's becoming customary for us to wait until our birthday on our calendar and adopt whatever day it first falls onto your calendar as our new birthday. That makes sense. What do you do for gifts? You guys have some, like, weird thing you wrap presents in? We don't do gifts. Really? Really. What about on Christmas? We were introduced to that concept in the last year. Ah. So, no presents at all? It's not our tradition. Well, all right. Would you like anything else? I lit a cigarette. Nah, just leave me with the booze. Tom attended the other patrons. I drank the whiskey and smoked my lucky. I sat there angry at the world. I pulled out my phone and flipped through the pictures I had on it of Iraq, Iran, and Afghanistan. I stopped on a photo of Doc, Kyle, Fowler, and the Fonz and me standing on top of our truck with our platoon's flag flying on the antenna. Life was so much easier when all I had to do was not get killed. Eclair turned around. He was sweaty, red, and his eyes were bloodshot. You alright, man? Yeah. I put my phone away and lit another cigarette. Do you, do you know that Smedley Butler had an EGA tattoo from his collar down to his hips? Uh, no, but okay. When he got his first Medal of Honor, uh, the, the South America part of the tat was blown off uh, trying to save his company commander's life. That's legit. When he, got a, when he got his second one, he sent it back to Congress and told them he didn't rate it. Okay, that's badass. Then when he was a lieutenant general, they tried to court-martial him for publicly calling a foreign head of state a tyrant. I can see that. It was Mussolini. Eclair squinted. Well, the big green weenie fucks everyone. Did you know that the Japanese commander at Tarawa said it would take a million men a thousand years to take the island? One marine division took it in less than 72 hours. Someone placed a hand on my shoulder. I turned to see Penelope. Hey. I leaned back onto the bar. Hey. Are you alright? I'm alright. I took a drag. He's fucking drunk. Eclair butted in. I'm not that drunk. Well, how drunk's that drunk? He's been over here blabbering about the Marine Corps for the last half hour. He's fucking drunk! How much have you had to drink? From behind the bar, Tom said, Bottle of rum, a fifth of gin, eight shots of Jaeger, a bottle of whiskey, plus whatever he had before he sat down. Nark. Christ, Hank. I rolled my eyes and shrugged. Well, can you walk? Sure. Can we talk for a moment? <sighs> sure. I followed Penelope outside the club. It was warm out and the breeze felt nice on my skin. Hank, I'm sorry about earlier. <sighs> it's alright. Penelope stared at the ground. She grabbed my hand and started rubbing my fingers. No, I offended you. And if I'm to be your lady, then that's not right of me to do. I thought it was in good fun and misjudged. I held an unsympathetic look on my face and stayed silent. I shan't do it again. I pulled my hands away from hers and stuck them in my pockets. It was only a joke, Hank. I was wobbling in my attempt to stand up straight. I pulled out my lighter and smokes and set flamed one of the little white sticks. Penelope crossed her arms and looked at the street. Tears rolled down her face. I reached into my pocket and pulled out a thin rectangular black box and extended my hand toward her. What's that? Take it. Her slender green fingers wrapped around the box. 
She removed the cover and looked inside. There was a rose pendant inside about the size of a quarter. The petals were carved out of a ruby and the leaves from an emerald. The rose hung on a silver chain. Penelope wiped her eyes with the wrist of her free hand. What's this? It's your birthday present. What? Don't tell me with all the TV watching on what a fucking birthday present is. I'm sorry, but I'm lost. It's it's something for you, just, just, just for you to keep. It's mine. From me. Like Christmas? Yeah. I don't have anything for you. Your birthday present is like Christmas, but just for you. Penelope took a step into me and placed her head on my shoulder. I put a hand on her waist and wrapped my other arm around the back of her neck. Are you angry still? I'm always angry. At me, you twat. Nah. The hand around her shoulder held my cigarette. I pulled it to my face to puff. You're one of the few people I don't always want to hit in the face with a brick. I like you too, Hank. And I promise not to have my friends make fun of you again. Yeah? And the necklace is beautiful. No one's ever given me anything before. I stroked her bright orange hair over her head and stopped at the back of her neck. I put my forehead on hers and said, Let's let's go home, babe. My dad's inside. He said he wanted to meet you. Can I wait for another time? And have us just disappear? Why not? Penelope paused a moment. Okay. We grabbed a taxi and made our way to Penelope's apartment. We walked into her bedroom without bothering to turn on the light. She still held the little black box. I slid it from her hand. I swiped her hair from the back of her neck and latched on the silver chain rose necklace. Penelope rubbed it with her fingers and turned her head to mine, connecting our lips. Penelope broke contact and kissed my neck. She pulled my jacket down to my elbows and undid the rest of my tie. I felt the blood start to build up in my loins. She ripped open my shirt and kissed her way south. Penelope unbuckled my belt and unbuttoned my trousers. My throbbing. Hey, real quick, uh, this part's really graphic. Um, violates YouTube community standards. Not gonna show it to you. Out. Penelope jerked her head back to dodge it. She wrapped her fingers around my shaft and looked up. Her left eye had begun to drift. It happened when she'd been drinking too much. She smiled up at me. You've been waiting for me. She smiled up at me and wrapped her lips around the head of my- I'd kinda like to keep the channel up. If you wanna hear it, sorry, gotta go get the audiobook. I put my hands behind Penelope's ears and bit my bottom lip. She milked my- Pretty much Hank and Penelope get home and they start doing the uh-uh thing. Like an Amish butter churner. I pulled her head to my- I'm not sure how much of that I'm gonna actually have to cut out yet, so you might get some of this, you might not. Stuck my- But anyway, here's the rest of the chapter. Down her throat. Penelope gagged and yanked her head back, but before she could pull my- Oh, this is gonna be the blooper thing. All the way out of her mouth, she vomited. <laughs> violently. The hot ooze covered everything below my hips. She turned her head up. Um- Before she could say- Sorry. The stench of her stomach fluid mixing with my inebriated state made me eject hot vomit full force into her face, <laughs> causing her to vomit again <laughs> all over my balls. I flailed down on top of her and started puking uncontrollably. She did the same. We laid there for a few minutes, unable to do anything except for spew out the hot contents of our stomachs. We squirmed in a pool of our own collective bile. It was hell. It was fucking hell. Penelope hurled and her whole body contorted. She accidentally kicked me in the torso. Repeatedly. I staggered to my knees and tried to lock my elbow into Penelope's arm. Our skin was too slick from the filth and I slipped. Penelope's head hit the floor and she let out a loud grunt. I grabbed her again, this time putting both arms under her armpits and locking my fingers together. I started dragging her to the bathroom. Penelope was groaning and still spewing up chunky liquid onto herself. The pressure and nausea grew in my belly again. I tried to puke from the side, but most of it went into Penelope's hair, baptizing her in my bile. When we reached the bathroom, I turned on the shower and stripped us of the rest of her clothes. I pulled Penelope into the tub and wrapped my arm around beside her. I tried to get the thick, brown slime and chunks of undigested food off of her body. Every time I about got her clean, she puked again on me, causing me to vomit on her. I wiped the spittle and slobber from Penelope's face. Hi! Shh, don't talk. I'll, I'll take care of you. I rubbed her forehead. I hated to see her in so much pain, even though I was in just as much. I felt like I was going to fucking die. In my mind, I was begging God for any mercy. For death. Either would have worked. 
<gasps> Hank! Yeah? Hank. I love you, Hank. Laying naked in the shower in San Diego with an alien, covered in each other's vomit, begging God for mercy or death, whichever was faster. And now she wants to tell me that she loves me. How fucking romantic. I love you too, babe. Hey everybody, thank you for listening to Smoke Pit Fairy Tales. Chapter 20, I would like to thank my voice actors, uh, Diane Spencer, Dan Brady, Chuck, Ash Nicole, Ainswolf, Damian Larkin, and Tegan Elliott. I'd also like to thank my Patreon people and people who have gotten the work chest. Those really help out the channel. Also, if you don't want to wait for the rest of this, you know, the, the audiobooks on wherever you get audiobooks.